Hello everyone, welcome to The Weeb Initiative, I'm your host, The Weeb. This is the show where every other week I'll be talking about anime, manga and everything in between. This week I'll be talking about, as hopefully the trailer of the second season already said, what the first anime I watched that really hooked me into this hobby. They really introduced me to anime, seasonal anime and eventually um, brought myself into reading manga. I'll be talking about a Maggie Brilliant Park. So, before I even start, the disclaimers, a spoiler alert, this time I will not spoil so much, because I think the um, revelations in the later half of the anime really pile up into the tension, as this anime really starts and ends in one season of 13 episodes, so I think um, it's better if I don't want to spoil everything, so I will go over some major points and some of my impressions, but uh, don't expect too much spoilers, too many spoilers, whatever. So let's g get started with the stats. So Amagi Brilliant Park originally was um, a light novel written by Shoji Gato. It was run from February 2013 to the present, according to Wikipedia. I don't actually know if this is true or not, I, I did not check. <clears throat> it has 8 volumes, and the anime came, came later in October 2014 through December 2014. It has 13 episodes plus the OVA. It was done by... Kyoto Animation, who also later on did Kobayashi no Made Dragon, which is a pretty good slice of life anime. A anyways, I'm getting off track already. And the music was done by Shinkishi Mitsumune. I may or may not have butchered that up, but anyways. And that's basically the stats. So let's get started with the story. So, why did I watch? Magibillion Park. So before I even start, right? So I watched this back when it was first airing. So week by week, I watched the new episodes as they were coming out. And why why did I start by this one? Um, outside from why did I w watch a random season anime in 2014? If there was at that point so many other anime way let's say better to introduce someone. Let's just say I I'm fairly um, influenced by internet culture and whatever. I saw a meme of a girl threatening a guy with a musket to go out on a date with her, and I thought, well, this is pretty funny. I might as well go into watching anime. I don't know, and so I watched it. Um, so basically, the story. Let's start with the story because this meme is actually the first scene you see as you start the first episode. So you meet your our main character Kanye Seiya and our main girl Sento Isuzu. Basically threatening uh, Sento is basically threatening uh, Kanye with a musket to go out on a date with him and starting a good slice of life kind of deal. As always, we go into a theme park, uh, an amusement park, but this time is a mus um, theme park based on fairy tales, basically. But the twist is, the park is awful. <laughs> the attractions are all run down, not working properly. The staff is both rude and violent. And the whole infrastructure of the whole thing is, is goddamn awful. Uh, basically, you... You would ask yourself, how is this even open nowadays? The park itself is deserted, so not any visitors, m m not many, uh, some, but not really a notable number. Even um, close to the um, summer vacation and whatever. And from this point on, the anime basically um, 
unravels itself really fast. The premise is given really, really quickly in the first episode because as Sento and Seiya go into this date, they basically uh, they go on the date. It's awful. Seiya is pissed off because he was threatened at gunpoint to go on a date with a crew he doesn't know to an awful place and later on they later on the same episode they the they cut right to the chase in this anime in general but the thing is the general manager of the park and i will butcher this latifa fluoranza she asks say it to be the new general the general manager of the park because for some reason they at the park believe that he is the key to saving it because uh, for whatever reason after so many years taking losses financially if they don't get the um, I, sh- I think it's 500,000 people into the park to July 31st the park will have to close down that being said um say eventually um gives in he initially refuses, but eventually gives in and let's say gets hired into the general man- management um, job. Although he has this condition that when he accomplishes his goal of saving the park, he will resign. That being said, one of the major things about the uniqueness, let's say, of this anime is that Seiya is not your normal run-of-the-mill protagonist. He's really clever, not dense at all. And and I say this uh, for real, I'm not being sarcastic when I say this. He's clever, he's not dense, he's really intelligent, and most of all, he's narcissistic. This is one thing that they flesh out a lot in the um, first half of the anime, because as things go on, the the character development demands that he kind of change a bit. So at this point, I, I need to kind of start to go in, go over the main plot points of the show without actually getting to the spoilers. Because if if I do, I f- really think I will uh, model ac- the experience of someone who might actually watch this later. I really recommend this anime. I'm already seeing this right out of the gate because it is really, really, really good. So, the thing is, um, this anime is basically what I would say a uh, Disney movie in anime form. Although there are no, I, from what I remember, uh, there are no Disney movies about amusement parks and whatever. But in some ways, it's and without um, really bringing too much into it, reminds me a lot of Up. You know the 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 one with the um, old guy in the balloon house and whatever. The thing is, C starts off being this really grumpy, really obnoxious person to work with, and he he does not hide how much he doesn't like to be there and doesn't doesn't actually want to to do what he's doing but from that point on uh, with the amount of people he gets to know the amount of experiences that we get to see you see that he eventually gets he eventually gets better not only that but uh, the anime itself has that let's say the movie magic of uh, showing how things really fall into place so um, from episode 2 to I think episode 9 a whole lot of random events occur in the park that are not really um, inside anyone's control but they all end up being for the um, betterment uh, the improvement of the park overall so in the f- first episodes we get to meet the cast or the um, 
let's say the staff that um, take care or are part of the attractions and side note just to explain and, and this is not really a spoiler they really get this point straight right in the beginning so basically what's the deal with the park what what the hell right what the hell it's um, you would think it's just a bunch of of people that are incompetent to that work. So what's the deal with saving the park if it is run down and whatever? So the story goes that um, the park actually is basically stuffed with um, beans of a magical land called Maple Land and every one of the staff, <clears throat> except for some people, uh, they are all citizens of the magical land that came through earth because they have to harvest animals which is the let's say the force of enjoyment <laughs> again uh, making references to P uh, disney pixar movies it is the laughter from the end of monsters inc but uh, that's basically it so they open the park and basically they harvest the the laughter and the good vibes of people that visit it and the whole the whole deal is that they need that to basically live. Though they can gather it from other means not being the park. But later on it becomes clear why the park itself is so important. But anyways, we get to meet the cast. So basically, the, let's say that both the citizens of the Magic Land and the, the humans. The humans at this point are like one person. That is the main security guy with has a um, luchador mask for some reason. It, it's never really um, explained any of it, but it is just funny. The the gag is the the um, out of place kind of deal. Let's say um, much of the comedy in this anime is really clever. When you look at it, it gets cl more clever. As it goes, but um, you will have to pay attention to it. I'll talk more about it uh, a bit later. But anyway, so let's just talk about the cast really quickly because they are not the star of the show. They don't actually, uh, not that they don't change much, but they they are the the best part of the comedy of the show. They, this show is comprised of uh, a tiny, tiny really tiny bit of romance um at the this whole quest about uh, rebuilding and improve improving the park and the facilities and whatever and, and then there's the comedy the comedy uh, some parts I, I just left out loud because they are so good but anyways so the f you get to meet all these let's say these mascots Basically, you you would say there are people inside the costume, but they are actually uh, mascot themselves. Let's say they are fairies, so they have like somewhat of special powers and whatever, and and they don't actually have costumes. They are that way, and eventually you, we get to see that when they they actually are really really um, close to humans in terms of living and whatever. And whenever they get out of the park, they have to use these special uh, pendants that um, make them look to other people like normal people. But anyways, that that's just the detail. So the first one is Mofuru. Mofuru is the um, <laughs> it's an old guy, and it, it, they are old old guys. The, the all the mascots. Are basically old guys, but they each represent one, one let's say trait of the old man in anime. And Mofuru is the straight man with the really, really short fuse. So Mofuru is violent, and most of the time, early on, uh, they he trades punches with Seiya a lot because they don't see eye to eye. But um, the whole thing is. Uh, Mofuru is really hot tempered, really violent, but it is funny because most of his interactions with Seiya at the beginning and violent interactions in general end up with him being shot by I Isuzu. 
uh, the thing is, right, so the, I don't know the um, demographic for this anime. I don't know if it's PG or whatever. The thing is, um, Itsu uses a, her musket that appears in the beginning a lot in the whole anime. She uses it over and over and eventually this also become, uh, becomes... Um, not only a trait of her, but um, problem and and eventually a point of the what of whole episode about her way of doing things. But the thing is, right? So uh, I'm building all this up because I I won't say uh, she never kills anyone. All her bullets do from what is implied is that each bullet that she has, like, she can load multiple bullets on the musket, whatever, it's a magical musket, she can use whatever bullets she wants, but every one of her bullets are kind of special, so there's one bullet that is the one she uses the most, that is the, the I think it's toe-stumping kind of bullet, whatever they, they say, it, she says, it is the twice the pain of... Um, Hitting your toe on your pinky toe on a piece of furniture, and later on we get to see that there is also a special bullet that makes people forget things, but they are r rarer bullets, so she can only like produce one a year, and this becomes a plot point later on. But whatever. Back to the mascot. So M Mafuru for. The most part, he's um, violent, whatever. But also, uh, later on, we get to see that actually he's uh, Latifa's uncle. And also, a, a side note about Latifa: Latifa turns out to be the princess of the um, Maple and the Magical Land they all come from. And why the hell is the princess of a uh, royalty of? Uh, for let's say, foreign land in in Earth. Um, they eventually explain that, but that's not to me to explain right now. So Mafuru is, is this generally a straight man, although not really, really calm or composed all the time. Next one, and these these two next ones, they, they are the funny ones. They're, they are just the funny ones. So the first one is Macaron. Macaron is basically um, he's a sheep, and he's the. Uh, and before I even continue, uh, each of the mascots are like fairies of something. So Mofuru, for for instance, is the snack fairy. I think Macaron is the music fairy. So he's the, the sheep, and <laughs> the one thing. And again, as I said before, all the mascots are old men. Macaron is a serial gambler and, <laughs> in general, a, a terrible person. Uh, he invents pranks and schemes to mess around with both Seiya, Isuzu, and whatever. The only the only person that it is, it is prohibited to be part of the prank is Latifa because Latifa is the princess. Don Macaron. Uh, some of the gags are just I can't explain really, but for example, there's this one scene that Seiya enters the Ferris wheel uh, with Latifa and Mofuru wants to spy on them with a uh, pair of binoculars. Macaron is holding a goddamn sniper rifle to <laughs> watch them. It is one little detail but it is so funny when you look at it and the next one is the best one uh tirami tirami is this uh, pink cat although he's a man uh, and the the i think the voice actress is actually a girl but not really to be you have to know that it is an old man there uh tirami is straight up a degenerate in more ways than one so from his destructive tendencies, from making explosives, and 
the the one that comes up a lot is that he's a he's a bloody pervert and he harasses women multiple times and gets punched multiple times to the end of the anime he gets punched a lot he harasses a whole lot of people but it, it is the i say this but it's the funny harassment you know that there's nothing there and all the times he he ends up getting a punch to the face or a bullet in the case of sento or you, you get it it is funny the, these three guys are the main mas mascots that really actually get the spotlight there are some side characters that get a whole lot of spotlights also but the these are the three that um, run most of the anime and their schemes are really nice some episodes are basically run through uh, their schemes their their ideas their um, some nonsense they invent it, be, it comes out to be this whole kind of thing these are the so th these are the basically the um, main characters let's say the other main characters that also happen to appear a lot in the anime but not so much are the four muses of one of the attractions the elementario there is Musi, Silphi, Kobori and Salama the fairy of water, wind, earth and fire they are just uh, let's say the for high schoolers more or less uh, she Silphi is not really understandable for the most part she's just straight up strange for the most part Muse is the more um, active of the, of the four she's cute and tries to be the the leader of the group more or less Kobori is just um uh, they could it she she's quiet and all but <laughs> and i have to say this in the 13th episode when the the whole story is kind of uh kind of wrapped up she has one bit that she talks that it is so funny it's out of nowhere and it is funny as hell and salama is basically a teenager girl who can't get out of twitter that's the best way I can put it and basically that's the, the um, main main cast so eventually we get to see a whole lot more we get to meet a whole lot more uh, staff um, uh, I just present these ones because they are the ones that actually not only have names that that are mentioned but they appear a lot but also because the other side characters also appear from time to time and you will remember be them because they don't actually have too much depth to them but they actually have uh they represent their let's say the personality their caricature really well and this is one point i want to talk about with this anime in general this anime is really short in terms of not only length but um, the whole uh, inner workings of it. So they, the story is pretty uh, simple when you look at it. The um, it is said and done and done and done, done and dusted. Um, in thirteen episodes, actually twelve because the thirteenth is more or less a bonus the um, it doesn't actually have twists and turns they don't actually add that much of anything there it doesn't actually have too much content but i think the charm of this anime uh, aside from the uniqueness of the the premise it is really well presented with everything it has so it it's a really, not to repeat myself, but it is really simple of a story, but it is really well presented, talking about both art and composure in general. The art in this anime is goddamn beautiful. They really 
knew where and when to use 3D animation. 3D animation is not done in any character whatsoever. They just used it in set pieces for the snare, for the backgrounds, for the scenarios, and it is just beautiful. They pull pull off some gags on some of the side characters, whatever. But in general, the whole animation, whole art direction is really nice. The the it feels good. The this aesthetic of the fairy tale is really there. Talking about music, I god damn, I love the opening for this show. The first time I, I started rewatching it, oh boy, I, I was almost crying. Not only because of nostalgia, don't get me wrong, but the um, the way they synced it, the um, images of the of the opening with the song, with the the whole thing, it is so well done. Uh, it's hard to me not to say that. It is one of the best openings I I ever saw. Not that the song is really good, as many other examples I already gave um, from previous reviews. But in terms of presentation and overall, the some of the parts are bigger than the parts itself. The the opening is really really well done. The ending is so so. Not really, uh, not anything to <laughs> write home about. Talking about the overall feeling, I I don't know, man. It's just good that it is really, really cute. For the most part, it's really cute. It is really wholesome. The you feel the the oh man, you you feel the the feelings. The feelings really pile up. The the happiness. The how cathartic it is at the end, and the all, all the things really, really nicely done. I have to say though, not really as a warning, but as just a, a minded. Um, some of the jokes, some of the let's say the the themes that they eventually get on with some of the encounters in the middle of the anime and whatever. And they veer into the into the dark side, let's say. Some of the things get really, really uh, messed up. But they it's just like one mention of something or whatever. Uh, and also in that same vein, they are not afraid to make more adult jokes. They really uh, pile on with it. So... Mainly with the three mascots, uh, Mafuru, Macaron, and Chirami, they they are really, really bad people in general. Chirami being the main culprit of most of it because he is a sexual harasser and whatever. But the the thing is, right? Um, some of the adult jokes are really nice. It's really funny. And oh, some some are uh, debatable, but most of them are pretty funny. And in general, this, this anime um, left me feeling really good about uh, watching it. It is, as I said in the beginning, it is really unique. It is um, something that really comes out of left field. You can't really, um, for the most part... Uh, the story goes in a way that it just feels good. It is pretty comfy, I would say, to watch. And that's basically it. The, the anime is overall pretty good as a slice of life, as something to, let's say, add to the repertorium. So, because, let's face it, <laughs> in this world we live in nowadays, you either watch Isekai or whatever else. That is action without the Sekai or I don't know, Moyo Blood, whatever, Kayon. Um, Magi Brilliant Park, I think it's um, not really an alternative to anything because it is really short, but it it goes into the group of things that have the 
good vibes and are fairly um, unique uh, for their own as an achievement. They, a Maggie Brilliant part being so simple and being so well presented, I feel like they really outdone the concept itself because it comes in, does its thing, and then goes out without much of any drama or whatever. I would not expect it to have a um, second season, whatever. I mean, it's been nearly 10 years already, but uh, the thing is, right, so <laughs> you never know. From these past few days, Aono Exorcist has been announced to have a new season coming up, so I don't know <laughs> anything could happen. But anyways, that's basically it for the review. Um, so I hope you liked it. Uh, thank you for listening. Please uh, like, share, subscribe, follow, depending on the platform you're on. Um, please join the Discord. I hope you enjoyed your time here. And I hope you stick around for the next one. Bye.